and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Madam Clerk, can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Uh, Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Zwicker? Here. Ms. Breyer? Here. Mr. Prince? Here. Mr. Person? Here. Ms. Palmer? Here. Mr. Corman? Here. Roll call. All present. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first uh, item of business on our agenda is a proclamation. If you could read that, Madam Clerk. Proclamation. Disability Awareness Month. Whereas the month of October has been designated by the President of the United States as National Disability Awareness Month, and whereas we join the President to nurture our culture of diversity and renew our commitment to building an American workforce that offers inclusion and opportunity for all, and whereas because an estimated one in six individuals has a disability, we, our coworkers, families, friends, and neighbors all benefit from an accessible society. And whereas individuals with disabilities have the right to be engaged in the economic, social, employment, cultural, and educational mainstream of American society, and whereas the city of Renton is interested in the welfare of and improving the quality of life for its citizens and employees with disabilities, and whereas by recognizing that play is an important vehicle for developing social in relationships, strengthening self-esteem, promoting motor skills, helping build verbal communications and building verbal muscle development. And whereas the city of Renton has been working closely with the Renton School District, services clubs, nonprofits, and community <coughs> members to develop and build the Meadowcrest Playground, a fully accessible playground co-located at the North Highlands Community Center and Meadowcrest Early Learning Center properties. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Law, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2013 to be Disability Awareness Month in the City of Renton, and I encourage everyone to join me in reaffirming our determination to achieve a society that affords independence, justice, and dignity for all. In witness whereof, I appear to set my hand and cause the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed this 14th day of October, 2013, signed Dennis Law, Mayor of the City of Renton. Mr. President. Uh, yes, Mr. Taylor. With pleasure and much enthusiasm, okay. I recommend that the Council adopt this proclamation as read. Second. It's been moved and seconded that Council adopt this proclamation as read. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, no. the ayes have it. Uh, Council concurs in the proclamation. And uh, to receive, I have a copy of it, and actually was signed by Dennis Law, even <laughs> though he's not here tonight. Um, and um, uh, to receive it, we've got Sean Claggett from our uh, Community Services Department, and then um, Colleen Miata and her mother and father are all here. And um, I thought that uh, I'd like to do a photo and include the council in it as we present the um, proclamation. So I think I may have them join me up here, if, if the council could. Um, I get behind the bias. We can bias. do the picture first. Okay. Where do we go? Our usual? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, here's this is for. Uh, can I hold? Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. This is this is for you. Which one is that? Slightly. Slightly what? President, Council Member Randy Corman, and Council Members. 
Um, my name is Sean Claggett. I'm in charge of the Specialized Recreation Program for the city. We, we offer a wide variety of activities from sports to, to arts, um, to field trips, and all kinds of um, fun activities for kids with special needs. Um, we want to thank all the volunteers. Uh, without the volunteers from throughout the city, we wouldn't have this great program. And for all of the uh, city's support, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Good. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're so welcome. Yes, thank you. You're so welcome, Colleen. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Sean. Okay, um, next I would like to um, oh move to another very special presentation. I think we have um, Mike McCarty here to present. Um, we're going to be honoring uh, one of our fellow council members, Rick Swicker, for the hard work he's done on the Association of Washington Cities Board for us. Thank you. My name is Mike McCarty. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Association of Washington Cities, and it is really a pleasure to be here. That's what being a community in a city is all about, let me tell you. That is awesome. So thank you for that uh, uh, resolution as well. So uh, many of you know the Association of Washington Cities represents each and every one of the 281 cities across the state. And our mission is simple. It's advocacy. It's about education, and it's about providing valuable services to cities and towns all across the state. So the board of directors of the Association of Washington Cities comes from all corners of the state. There are 25 members of the board of directors. All but two are elected officials. We have a representative, two representatives from the City Managers Association in Washington are also on our board. Council Member Zwicker was on our board for two years, 2011 to 2013 and it is my honor to present a nice little plaque to council members wicker and it says in appreciation of your dedicated service and valuable contributions to the association of washington cities 2011 to 2013. Okay, um, next on our agenda is a public meeting on uh, 2013 water use efficiency goal setting. Good evening, Council President, members of Council. Uh, my name is Abdul Gafour. I'm the City Water Utility Agency Supervisor. I'm here tonight to present you with a brief background on the city past water use efficiency goals and also on a proposed goal for the next six years. Uh, following my short presentation, we will accept comments and questions from the public and the audience on the proposed new goal. Uh, as a background, the municipal water law was passed in the state of Washington in 2007 and it went to effect on January 22, 2007. The, the purpose of the municipal water law is to improve the efficient use of water and to, and to strengthen the ability to meet competing needs of a growing population, agriculture, industry, and fish. One of the main requirements of the municipal water law is for the city as a water provider to set water use efficiency goals and to update the goals every six years. 
The previous goals were adopted by council in November 2007. So the law also requires that the new goal must be set in a public forum in order to provide an opportunity for the public and for the, consum for the consumers to participate and comments on the goals. As such, our city clerk has put an advertisement in the Rent Reporter on September 27, 2013 about a request for public input on this matter. We have also provided information package with, with, uh, in the app to explain the background of the goals and the goal setting process. This information is also posted on the city's website and on the Washington State Department of Health website. Um, about six years ago, uh, the city council adopted three initial goals for the water use efficiency. The goal number one was to reduce the water system leakage to 10% or less by the year 2010. I'm happy to report to you that you know, the city non-revenue water had dropped from 19% in 2007 to 8.5% in 2012. In terms of uh, gallons per day, we had 204,000 gallons of water loss on the cut of water in 2007 per day, and compared to 75,000 gallons per day in 2012. So it's more than half amount reduction. Uh, the significant drop in the loss is due to our maintenance program on leak detection and repair of water mains. Also on the annual replacement of water mains in cities, we have replaced about 5,000 feet of main a year. And also, as you may recall, on the, on the implementation of the automated meter reading program. In the last two years, we have converted 8,000 out of the city's 17,000 water meters into the AMR program, which allow us leak detection and early notification of our customers of our leak. Uh, the, goal, the second goal the council adopted back in 2007 was to lim limit our peak day demand to 16 and a half million gallons a day. And that is due to the limitation on the city's water rights on our wells and Springbrook Springs. Once again, our peak demand has dropped from 15 MGD million gallons per day in 2008 to 12 million gallons a day in 2013. So we accomplished two goals out of the three. And the last goal the council adopted was to continue the reduction of average annual water use by 0.5% per year per connection. Our current domestic consumption account has dropped from 128 cubic feet to 116 100 cubic feet, which is about 2% decrease per year, which is more than the 0.5% per year the council adopted uh, six years ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy again to report that we have met and exceeded all the goals the council That's adopted terrific. six years ago. Uh, a little bit about the new goal. As you recall, on January 2012, the city entered into a 50-year contract with CR Public Utilities for long-term water supply to supplement the city's own supply if we need it. As part of this contract, the city now is a full member of the Seattle uh, Conservation Group known as the Savings Water Partnership, which consists mainly of Seattle and 18 other wholesale water purveyors uh, from neighboring cities and district. On the, all the members you know, in Seattle collaborate in the development of the new goal for 2013-2018, and the all the members set and oversee the conservation goals, the objective of the program, and the program intensity. The group reviewed the current water demand forecast for the region, for the entire region, along with the forecast population increase of 3.9% over the six year period. They also look at the cumulative impact from water savings related to current conservation programs. They look at the financial incentives and rebates offered three years the price-induced conservation measure, the rate structure, and the, the group determined that a new source of water supply for the whole region will not be needed until the year 2060, despite continual growth in the region. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important uh, uh, goal because if a new source of supply was needed, the cost would be passed on to the purveyors. So the, the, based on the analysis, the, the, 
Seattle and the province will not need a new supply until 2060. Perfect. So the group came up with a, a regional common goal, which is to reduce per capita water use from current levels so that the total average annual retail water use of all members of the Saving Water Partnership, meaning Seattle and the 18 purveyors, to less than 105 million gallons a day from 2013 to 2018, despite forecast population growth. Um, although currently the use is above that number, CL and the, the whole purveyors group estimate that the, the, the use will be reduced for the next six years. And this new goal has been accepted by the Washington State Department of Health. So that's an important um, adoption. And also the goal is being formally adopted by each utility governing body and it is annually reported to by each utility. You know, we report on the on the water use every year. Uh, the metrics for determining the success the success of this program is in the meter retail consumption in the partnership members, regardless whether water supplied by SPU or by a member's own supply. So we all our consumption are reported as one common number to evaluate the goal. Uh, the proposed goal will be will be implemented through targeting on several customers program with specific with specific measures and action. Number one is communication. The, the Saving Water Partnership is exploring new options to improve conservation communication, especially with non-English speaking customer. Uh, the partnership has a translation phone line for all non-English speaking customer currently, and they have a lot of multi-language how to do videos on that site. Uh, they will increase the youth and commu community education on conservation. They will expand school programs on the conservation. They are conducting and will be, we continue to conduct landscape irrigation efficient program with contractors. Um, they will also do residential indoor efficiency equipment uh, audit. And finally, they will do industrial, commercial, institutional, water efficient equipment upgrades. Um, the, the list of programs offered through the partnership is on the website of savingwater.org. So it's, it's an extensive list. All the rebates are listed. All the audit uh, services are listed on that on that web page, savingwater.org. Uh, with that, I would entertain public comments. The council please. Okay. Yes, this is a public meeting. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet. No one has signed up for speaking. Is there anybody in the? audience that would like to speak on this topic on this topic. on this topic right okay okay yes if you don't mind uh, come to the podium and uh, give your name please I'm Renata Bean I live in Tiffany Park um, I, I have a question for excuse you me about would you spell your name please R E N A T E B E E D O N thank you um, on one of your sheets here, it says that um, we are saving water through shower heads, toilets, new washing machines, and things like that. How do you measure that? How do you know that people get different shower heads and different toilets and washing machines? Because we just did that, and I wonder how you know about that. <laughs> We're spying. No, no, no. <laughs> You mean you have a drone hanging yeah, over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, council members, uh, I have a list of all the program that the, the partnership has been doing in Renton for the last two years. And I, uh, th there's a number of apartments in Renton that they have retrofitted. Honey Creek Apartment, for example, Bella Vista Apartment, Sam's Club, Boeing, Pack Car, Cortina Apartments. They have done 33 single family toilet rebates. 83 multifamily toilet rebates, I can give you the address, two multifamily commercial irrigation rebates, and water smart technology rebates. So we do have a printout of all the services that they provide. But, but you don't measure um, the average home because you can't, right? Because right. Well, yeah. no. But I mean, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> but the toilet that they give you now have less water per flush. Yeah compared to the old one you have, right. and the shower had lower flow rate. But how do you know that is what, what looks like <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I don't know. understand the question. Yet. Did you get well, a bill every month? I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think she's asking an interesting question. I think she's she's just she's acknowledging that she's made some of these changes and she's wondering how we know. But I but I think isn't the answer that, um, I mean, as a community, when when you know, out there, all of our local uh, building supply and hardware stores are all selling low flow shower heads, low flow toilets all of the new fixtures so anybody that remodels is basically getting more efficient um, plumbing fixtures and i think that's kind of what the city's acknowledging so it's an assumption it's an assumption okay. right yeah people could be going to the black market and getting the um, the <laughs> toilets that still flow a lot of water but but we don't but think that's that what we got always <laughs> <Don't tell anybody. laughs> mr corman um, uh, there's I somebody that knows the answer in the back that's been waving at us and maybe she could come up and uh Oh, you have to go to the mic. I have to come to the mic. <laughs> um, we need a recording no, actually, to pick it up. There's whole books on this. The whole book on, they have standardized. Could you please state your name for the record? I'm Helen Wegraff, State Clinton Water Utility. They take how much your old shower use. They know how many gallons per minute your old shower use. They know how many gallons per minute your new shower head uses. How, how do they know that? Oh, because it, it's rated. The new shower heads are rated like, like at 2 or 1.5 gallons per minute. And this, it's it's a standardized it's a standardized number, and that's what these are the numbers that you see here are based on. Yeah. Um, right here. Yeah. It's 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 they're they're standardized. And like a washing machines, there are different tiers of washing machines. They take your standard washing machine uses I think like 30 gallons, and then there's like there's the different tiers they use like ha the most efficient ones use half of that. So you can figure if you were using 30 gallons and you're and they have an estimate of how many loads you do per week yeah you know it's so it is it's an estimate we're not spying on you no 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 i i <laughs> if you spy on me i actually <laughs> have to be people that doesn't care yeah. but i'm actually going yeah, somewhere with this okay. and, and what that is is i personally haven't seen much from the city um to encourage the citizens to save water and um you know to conserve water and like that and I think it's very important. Wait, I'm going somewhere with Would this. you speak into the mic, please? I'm sorry. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay. And, and what I'm going at is it would be interesting if the city did some kind of a, not a contest, but that they say, you know, if um, your neighborhood yeah. does this, this and this to conserve water, yeah. they will recognize you somehow. I, that's a neat or something idea. like that, you know, that. Um, I think that's a really neat idea. Yeah. yeah. Doing some of that that thing. Create some kind of sort of friendly competition between neighborhoods. Yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. To take it to the next level. You know, like Puget Power, they have, they send us this letter every month where we either get a smiley face or a frowny it, face. It, right. And I take that seriously. <laughs> I always get the frowny face at my house. Yes. <laughs> anyway, that's all yeah. I wanted Thank to you. say. Thank Wonderful you. suggestion. Right. Thank you very much, and great questions. Thank you, Mr. Corman. Uh, yes. I have a couple Mr. questions. Oh yeah. Of Abdul. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Abdul. I hope they're as entertaining as those were. <laughs> uh, this, oh, uh, I can't match that. <laughs> uh, our citizens get water from three different sources. They get it from the City of Renton, Water District 90, and Seuss Creek. So my question is, is Seuss Creek and Water District 90 involved in the consortium that you just uh, talked about. Yes, Councilman. Uh, okay. Seuss Creek District 90 are both members of the Water Progress Committee, and they both get water from Seattle. Okay. And so does Cedar River Water Sewer District. The only one that does not get it from is Skyway Water District. They get it from they get it from Seattle, but through the Cascade Water Alliance. They still Seattle water. Yeah. Okay. And I and then I guess you know so the council passes. Uh, goals. If we if we were to set a goal, we have no control over Water District 90 or Seuss Creek. So, uh, I mean, how do you have any idea how their goals? It's the same goal. Basically, it's the same goal the now. Same goal but now. Our but goals next for year. 2007. Have they met any goals the same as we have? Um, what they do, Councilman, is that they use Seattle's goal. So as long as Seattle met that goal. All the districts that buy water from Seattle have met that goal. It's a common goal established through Seattle, mm. and Seattle implements it. All the districts do is they report the the consumption to Seattle. So as long as the consumption is below 105 MGD, then the, the Seattle and the 18 provisions met that goal. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, good. And do our goals usually align with do our goals usually align with Seattle's goals? Are this they is similar? the first time that all the partners have a common goal. In the past, before the the new contract was signed, each city and district have their own goals. And so Seattle say, okay, since we are providing water to all of you, let's do a cooperatively, co collaboratively, and de determine a goal that makes sense, that can be measured, and it can be adopted, not by the previous, but also by the State Department of Water to Health. So that's okay. what's important. Okay. Okay. Mr. Mr. President. Uh, yeah. Abdul, can you just, uh, in, in, by the way, Abdul gave us a wonderful presentation at our utilities committee uh, this afternoon. But one of the things that was most impressive, and I think it may speak to those questions that you have, is that this is a regional uh, goal through Seattle, it, it, essentially with the water, you know, uh, 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 goals. And that, uh, as you explained it to us, that there is, uh, there has been a, a collective improvement with all of the, the members of, uh, of this effort. Uh, and we're benefiting in that some of the upgrades that need to be made, you know, in terms of uh, what we have to do here to uh, 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 meet some of those goals are maybe may, may a little different um, individually than Seattle because they may have already done them, but mm -hmm. collectively it, it, it works towards the entire group's uh, improvements. Is that, that accurate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, touch on that. Did I explain it so well you don't have to come and clean it up? <laughs> No, it's, a, it's a common goal. So we all, and again, yeah, we will value this goal every year, okay. and then we we'll report back to council at the end of the year. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the public? Um, from council? Okay. What's the pleasure of the council? Move, Move the, the public, public hearing be closed. Okay. Uh, do I hear a second? I heard, I heard uh, Ed Prince uh, make a motion. And then a second from Mr. Zwicker. It's uh, been moved and seconded that the public hearing be closed. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, the, uh, or the public meeting, I should say, is, is closed. Um, thank you very much. That Mr. Was Briggs. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the best public meetings I've <laughs> sat through in a long time. I love the interaction with residents, with staff that has knowledge. Um, Thank you. That was great. Oh, and, like and a, council members. Yeah, too. I thought it felt like a meeting. That yeah. was actually quite quite interesting. Thank you. Um, okay, so next on our agenda is the administrative report. Do we have a report tonight? Right. Uh, we don't have any administrative report tonight, council. That's okay, it. very good. Then we'll move along to item seven, audience comment. Uh, I have two people that have signed up to speak tonight. The first is Howard McCumber. Don't know how to make this machine work. Uh oh, and Jay's away. Jay is yeah, gone. good luck. He's our go to uh, no machine button. guy. We're probably not going to have that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is, is there, is there anyone push? that knows how to make that work other than Jay? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh. Jay, Jay will be pleased to know how much he was missing. Job security. <laughs> <laughs> We've said we need to train yeah. Howard. We, yeah, as often as I do, that's true. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, to do this. Oh, hey, oh, very nice. Now can we Jason. Make it Jason. So it's clear. It Watch out, Jay. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Jay just well, lost a little bit of job focus. security there. Yeah. Focus it a little better. Than there that. is something there. No pressure. <laughs> well, at least there oh, oh, well done. Oh. Ha. <laughs> okay. Howard Howard McCombo lived in the well city done. of Renton. Uh, I'm always interested in affordable housing, especially owner-occupied affordable housing, uh, but that's not my topic tonight. The topic tonight is Boy Scouts of America. Uh, this, on the 29th of October, will be the 100th anniversary of the Mormon Church uh, being involved with Boy Scouts, sponsoring Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts is a tremendously positive organization. Uh, like everything that tries to do good, it gets a lot of flack at times, but the flack is minuscule compared to the amount of good that it does. It's tossing out the baby with the bathwater if you don't push Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts, in my personal opinion, is a wonderful volunteer organization that helps young men and helps them to succeed in life. Now, as far as the young men are concerned, it's 95% fun. <laughs> and as far as the leaders are concerned, it's probably a higher percentage of that on character building. As long as everybody gets what they want, hey, we, we want. That's what it's about. Now, the church that I represent, <coughs> or I'm talking about, uh, provides scouting opportunities for any boy, 8 to 18, in the city of Renton. 
at no charge. We register and we pay for it. It's a positive, it's an outreach, so any boy is welcome to come. If they will call John Patchen, who's in charge of the Boy Scout Council, for everybody in the Renton School District, he can give them where a, some troops to look at and some things to go at. It's just a, such a positive thing. Now you all will be getting a little invitation in the mail. We're going to have a special, spectacular thing with Boy Scouts doing all kinds of Boy Scout things, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, on the 29th, on Tuesday, a couple of weeks from now. I know that all of you are volunteers. I think it was nice that Rich got awarded tonight because I think I've eaten this way hot dog. He does so much for so many people. And when he's not on this council, he'll still be volunteering forever. So I think that that is so positive. All of you are volunteers, and this is a volunteer organization, which is so positive. Any questions? If you know a boy or a parent who'd like to be a scout, uh, cost them anything to try, come have fun with us. All thank right. You. Oh, thank you very much, Howard. Okay, next uh, up is Dave Beaton. My name is Dave Beaton, B-E-E-D-O-N. I live in Renton. And um, I'm sorry I missed the recent city council meetings. I understand that there was an interesting um, experience at a couple of meetings regarding the subject of free speech and King County Council and whatever. And all I know about it is what I read in the Renton Reporter. So I don't know the details, but the impression I get, well, first of all, I must say free speech is a great thing. And being able to comment in a city council meeting is a great thing. And I personally believe that any city council ought to do the same thing or any county council ought to do the same thing. It's a good idea. However, there are limits to what can, I guess, be called appropriate for a particular city council or any government body. And that is, uh, the limit, I guess, would be <laughs> issues directly affecting that body. And in this case, the city of Renton, issues that, that uh, affect the governing of the city of Renton seem to be appropriate, and anything that doesn't mm -hmm. might not. And the impression I got from the article is that uh, the subjects discussed and the manner in which they were discussed in these meetings was wildly inappropriate and rude and um, antagonistic. Um, like I said, I wasn't there, so I'm just kind of quoting from the article. So you folks have my sympathy for having endured that. And I wondered if the council or any other aspect of the city government has thought about establishing some rules regarding what you can talk about. I know there's a, a rule about not promoting certain political candidates, but has the, has the council made any steps as a result of this episode to further refine the rules about what can be discussed in a meeting? You know, I, I could probably speak to that. It really is a whole we have not uh, talked about it. The, uh, the city attorney has considered some options and sort of independently uh, provided them to us in a, in a privileged memo, the kinds of things we could consider. We've not gotten together as a council and talked about it. If we did, um, and I think we will eventually, um, it would be in a public meeting so the public could be there to make sure that, um, that that their interests are taken care of, um, but it 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 has. I think uh, I think a lot of us are thinking about it right now, and um, I would just say that uh, we've heard some really fine ideas from the public, and I and and also we've been we've gotten very supportive comments from the public, and I think all of the council members appreciate the 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 kindness the public has shown us as the, as we try and cope with you know trying to protect that valuable public portion of the meeting, but to, to keep it focused. Um, many of the ideas just end up being a little harder to implement than one might think because, for instance, um, we would want to leave the meeting open if, if somebody really felt like King County wasn't treating them very well and they needed our advocacy, we wouldn't necessarily want to prevent them from coming and presenting that, but, but what we wouldn't want to have is them saying it over and over again and and making um, degrading comments about us and King County through the whole process. And so it's, it's, it's hard to think of what set of rules we, we put out there that, 
that sort of cover that. But we are, you know, we are working on it, and I'm intending to schedule it as a committee of the whole, maybe later this year um, or early next year. Um, but anyways, that's sort of the status, and I, I didn't mean to use up your time, so we'll feel free um, to, if you have. Oh, please, yeah, if other. I just want to make a comment. Um, both Randy and I and, and Don and a couple of us have been on it for a long time, and it's certainly not the first time that we've had um, topics that um, got people riled and we have had some pretty wild um, council meetings over the years there were times where we had to have um, well we have a policeman probably here now but we when we started <laughs> having uniform policemen standing in the back because um, things could easily get out of hand so it's something that kind of just goes along with um, having the opportunity of free speech and obviously we have to kind of if it's really bad you know it's up to the mayor or the chairperson to kind of um, either direct it a different way or, or stop it but mm -hmm. you know I would really hate to see uh, us make any changes that would prevent people from speaking so it's, it's part that. of the job yeah. I remember a while back there was uh, some people they came here to ask the council to get involved with some sort of national tax issue right, right. and it just seemed completely right. out of place for this this forum so anyway like I said you have my sympathy for having to endure that kind of stuff uh, I really don't think it's appropriate because it's a waste of your time and as far as what what kind of thing you as a body can do you can lead by example and I think you're already doing that by having this open public commenting in your council meetings which is a good thing now how, how King County Council wants to deal with that that's their issue and I think it's the issue of the people who are represented by that council yeah I know it's kind of tricky and, and, and it's nice to get um, people or organizations behind you in certain social movements but you know, I guess you have to draw the line somewhere. I'm not saying you shouldn't do anything uh, in response to somebody's appeal, but uh, the, one that, the ones that just occurred seem to be really yeah. weird. Well, <coughs> unfortunate. Just, yeah, and I'll just add one other thing. I mean, you're you're demonstrating it so well right now that uh, when somebody comes to speak to us and they actually speak to us and you communicate with us and. I, I think it can be very effective, especially uh, when done with, um, you know, if they've sent us letters or emails, when somebody comes up to the podium and they go, I sent you an email and I want to just take a couple minutes and explain why. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it just seems like they care about what we think and they, um, just like they're having a conversation with us, it's very effective. Um, I had gone to the website actually of the people that were here <laughs> repeatedly and it just said on their website that they're goal was to just go and repeat the same sort of message over and over again at these public meetings and and I'll just say from from where I sit that's not effective at all mm -mm. I mean it's just it's just as the editor of the rent reporter said um, it just became a time when I just you know check my email or something because hearing the same message over and over again um, I don't know if that works you know for five-year-olds or whatever but it certainly doesn't work for us and so um, so I appreciate so much when people just come and and recognize us as a as a group of, of individuals up here and just talk to us um, with the normal amount of civility that, that that we'd expect and that you'd expect and so so thank you for the way you've always presented and the, the public by and large does such a wonderful job and we we like hearing from people um, but the other thing that had come up as they were speaking the other day was that uh, you know it was clear they weren't using the other methods of communicating with us and to get the you know, anybody who's under the impression that they have to come speak to the council to get our attention is mistaken because we do check our email and um, and there's uh, we take phone calls and um, people can meet us um, off hours our, our council liaison will set up appointments so um, you don't have to come to the council meeting to 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 get information to us but anyways thank you uh, so much for your support and anybody that that has ideas in, including you Dave that um, that wants to suggest them um, especially anybody that can sort of solve the puzzle of how do we leave enough um, room for you know we, we want even people that are outside the city to be able to come because sometimes they own businesses in the city or own property in the city um, and then we want to be able to like sometimes we'll pre-zone areas outside the city limits so we don't want to exclude 
uh, those individuals from from coming. But but we just we just don't want people to harangue us like a broken record with some <laughs> message that's completely off topic. But uh, thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. Um, one other thing on a, on a different subject. I think Mr. Seth, I believe that who who, was, who um, worked some magic here with the projector. I think he should be um, the recipient of some kind of recommendation, some kind of <laughs> award, you know, recognition award for saving the meeting. The, the, yeah. the Jay Covington awesome. projector award. <laughs> <laughs> all right, very good. Um, I don't have anyone else signed up. Was there anyone else? Uh, yeah, would you like to come to the podium? State your name and uh, city of residence, please. Well, my name is uh, Paul Watt, and I'm a city uh, resident here. Uh, I hadn't meant to stand up and talk tonight, but I want to commend uh, Howard here for mentioning the Boy Scouts, which is, I think, one of the most wonderful organizations we have for our youth these days. Uh, the one thing he didn't mention is when you go back and get a little bit younger, we got Cub Scouts. Mm -hmm. Now, as Cub Scouts in the Kennedale area, it's probably about 30 years ago, I'm aging myself, uh, I was a Cub Scout master. Mm -hmm. And the amount of uh, things that they learned through Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts uh, actually helps make uh, people I think better citizens uh, I recently because the doctor told me I had to start walking again and here about two or three weeks ago I haven't been going up past the Kennedy grade school where I walk around that track you know, mm -hmm. and I run into the Cub Scouts and they were having it wasn't the Pinewood Derby. It was a deal where they had a trough out front with a uh, with water in it, and they had all built these. All the Cub Scouts had each built little boats with uh, like sails on them, mm -hmm. where they'd put that. Two of them would mm. go down these two deals. They'd put the boats in there, and they'd behind them and blow them to eliminate, go through a double elimination tournament. And I thought that was really great. I'd never, when I was a Cub Scout Master, we never had anything like that, but I thought it was great. And the only thing that I thought was really missing, and maybe I'm also to blame, I didn't see anybody from the city council out there uh, more or less recognizing uh, the Cub Scouts and how they started because or to keep them going because I remember the time that I did do the Cub Scouting it was a time that the pack was about ready to fold hmm. and some of us might remember the old old school that had the building had the, like two foot thick walls that the guy that tore it down almost went bankrupt <laughs> Uh, I started out there as awards chairman, and then the next new school got built, uh, and I was a cub master there. But uh, now they got the other new school again after the airplane went into the old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that uh, in the future, uh, in support of the youth of Renton, that. Uh, I would hope to see occasionally some sure. uh, city council members show up at some of these organizations and, and the scouts and boy scouts to uh, lend their support. Okay. Thank you for your yeah. time. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, I anyone else to speak to the council tonight? Okay. Um, well, with that, uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Madam Clerk, uh, or I forget how we do that. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> you say that there's how many items? Oh, is that what I say? <laughs> I forget how we do this. A through. Yeah, what's that? Seven items on the consent agenda tonight? Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes, Mr. Person? I move we approve the consent agenda as approved. Second. As a, uh, presented. Okay. 
been uh, moved by Mr. Person and seconded by Mr. Zwicker, was it? Yep. yep. That we approve the consent agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no? Okay, the consent agenda is approved. Thank you for reminding me how that works. Um, okay, next we move to unfinished business. Um, Mr. Taylor. Are you going to skip your item, uh, Mr. President? Um, I'll be happy to go if you will. Yeah, um, I'll let Don present that, I guess. I don't know, is that protocol? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, but, you go ahead, but you go ahead first, uh, Mr. Yes, uh, Community Services does have a committee report. Community Services Committee Report, Planning Commission Appointment. The Community Services Committee recommends concurrence in Mayor Law's appointment of Ms. Angelina Benetti to the Planning Commission for a term expiring June 30th, 2016, position previously held by Gwendolyn High. This is signed by the three committee members. Mr. Chair, Mr. Yes, President, Mr. Taylor, I move that Council concur with the Community Services uh, Committee Report. Second. Been moved uh, by Mr. Taylor, seconded by Ms. Palmer, that uh, committee reports approved by the council. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Mr. Uh, President, uh, Mrs. Benedetti is in the uh, the audience, and uh, she is a wonderful, if I could say, acquisition to our planning commission. She comes with a pretty impressive background, and uh, I invited her uh, to come and just to introduce herself, to show her face, and just to say a little bit before our home audience. Well, I'm glad you did. W welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Council. I just want to thank you for the appointment. This is an excellent opportunity to give back to a community I love living in with my uh, family. I know there are some friendly faces who I've known for some time there on the Council, and thank you very much for this opportunity to serve. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You. I hope they're all friendly faces, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There are some that are friendly. There are some that have known me since I was a very little person. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> that was wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your willingness to serve. Thank you so much. Yes, Mr. President, I might add that Ms. Benedetti, she has a deep history, deep roots here in the city with her parents and uh, her own background, and she's been very active uh, throughout the community, the community, so she's going to be a wonderful uh, acquisition to our planning commission. Fantastic. Great. Glad to have her. Thanks. And that all. Was that all? Okay, uh, Mr. Zwicker. I just wanted to point out that there are six friendly faces up here and one <laughs> unfriendly one. And you see that open for discussion. Um, no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Ms. Breyer. I have known her since she was very tiny. Um, I have a finance committee report. Finance committee report, reserve and stabilization fund policies. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence with the staff recommendation to restore fund reserves to use available one-time sources and year-end balances to increase stabilization reserves as proposed and to incorporate service adjustments necessary for the development of the 2015-16 biennial budget. This is signed by the three committee members. Uh, Mr. President? Uh, yes, Ms. Breyer? I move that Council concur with the Finance Committee report. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Council concur with the finance report. Is that Mr. Person the seconded? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Approved. And uh, was, was that all? Yes, that's all I had. Okay, uh, Mr. Prince. Yes, the uh, utilities committee report will be done next week, so I have no report, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and uh, Mr. Person? Yes, I have the committee of the whole report to re refer out. Committee of the Whole Committee Report, Benson Hill Community Plan. The, planning, the Committee of the Whole recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the Benson Hill Community Plan as presented and to adopt the resolution. This is signed by the Council President. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Mr. Person. I move the Council approve the report as read. Second. Been uh, moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Zwicker that the uh, uh, committee the whole report be approved. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The uh, recommendation report is approved. Um, and was that all, Mr. Person? That's it. All right. And uh, Ms. Palmer. I don't have a committee report, but I wanted to report out on a briefing that the uh, Transportation Aviation Committee received um, last week. RAC, which is the Renton Airport Advisory Committee, um, 
submitted their recommendation on performance-based navigation. And I just wanted to give you just a brief summary of what that is. On March 11, 2013, the City Council Transportation Aviation Committee requested the Renton Airport Advisory Committee, or RAC, review the subject of implement implementation of GPS-based approach and departure procedures for the Renton Airport. This subject has been raised recently by the busy airport study performed by the Puget Sound Regional Council. The consensus of the RAC members present was that the performance-based navigation may offer some benefits at the Renton Airport. These potential benefits include increasing safety, increasing the runway availability to support aircraft manufacturing in Renton, and reducing noise and flights over Mercer Island and the Talbot Hill neighborhoods. So the recommendation, city staff, the recommendation from the RAC members is that city staff should initiate informal consultations with the FAA regional office staff on performance-based navigation and provide a formal report back to the RAC and the City Council Transportation Aviation Committee explaining what was learned from the meeting with the FAA regional office staff. And the reason I highlighted a few of those, but we want to be in a position, should the FAA decide to move forward, that our airport um, is at the table. Because we know that Boeing and SeaTac well, and the um, flight space is overlapping, and we need to hold on to what we have. Mm -hmm. So this would increase, um, it, it would just be, in the long run, a, a very good thing for the airport, for businesses, and for our neighborhoods. So we'll report back out um, when we have more information on that. All right. That's it. Well, thank you, thank Ms. You. Palmer. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll move on to the next section of our agenda: resolutions and ordinances. And we have a couple of resolutions tonight. The first re resolution regards the 2013 Transportation Demand uh, Implementation Agreement. A resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to enter into an interlocal agreement with the Washington State Department of Transportation entitled Transportation Demand Management Implementation Agreement. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Ms. Palmer. <laughs> uh, I move that Council adopt the resolution as read. Second. Okay, it's uh, been moved by Ms. Palmer, seconded by Mr. Taylor, that the resolution be adopted. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, the ayes carry. The uh, resolution is adopted. The second resolution regards the Benson Hill Community Plan. A resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, adopting the Benson Hill Community Plan. Mr. Mayor. And Mr. Person. I move the uh, resolution be adopted as read. Second. Okay been uh, moved by Mr. Person, seconded by maybe Mr. Swicker again, uh, that the resolution be adopted. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Okay, next up is an ordinance for second and final reading. Yes, and this ordinance regards the Comcast Cable Television Agreement. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending ordinance number 4412 by extending the term of the cable television franchise held by Comcast of Washington 4 and Comcast of California, Colorado, Washington 1, Incorporated. Mr. Mayor? And Mr. Person? I move the ordinance be adopted as read. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by, by Mr. Zwicker, that the ordinance be adopted. Uh, this is second and final reading, so we need to have a roll call vote. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Zucker? Aye. Ms. Breyer? Aye. Mr. Prince? Aye. Mr. Person? Aye. Ms. Palmer? Aye. And Mr. Corman? Aye. <laughs> and oh. oh. And then Mr. Taylor, that was uh, That was a here here for an eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's uh, unanimous, the ayes have it. And uh, uh, ordinance is adopted. Um, okay, so next up is new business. Uh, Mr. Taylor. No new business. Um, Mr. Zwicker. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, the Planning and Development Committee's meeting scheduled for Monday, October 21st at 9 a.m. is canceled. That is all. Okay, thanks, Mr. Zwicker. Uh, Ms. Breyer. 
Uh, yes, the Finance Committee will be meeting on Monday, October 21st from 4.30 to 5.30. We have five items, um, vouchers, uh, job order contract work, job order contract work order number three, uh, a budget adjustment for the structural review for the Cedar River Trestle Trail Bridge, uh, first rate mortgage lease and emerging issues and revenue streams. Okay, busy. Um, very good. Um, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Prince? No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, Mr. Person? Yes. Uh, Mr. Corman, I have the two committees uh, to report on. First, the Committee of the Whole will meet next Monday at 6 p.m. in the Council uh, Chambers for a briefing on programs slash activities that address homelessness slash vulnerable populations in Renton. That's doing that for you since Thank you. you're sitting as the mayor. And then at 5.30 p.m. in the Public Safety Committee, we'll meet in the Council Conference Room and the discussion will center around nuisance definitions, ordinance, and emerging issues in public safety. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Person. And uh, Ms. Palmer. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, um, so we'll move on to second chance at audience comment. Is there anyone that wants a final chance to speak to the council tonight? Move we adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Mr. Prince that we adjourn. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. We are adjourned.